So here we are back on the extension in part four. And here's Jago wearing a mask because cement's a hazardous material. And this is the speed that every customer would like their builders to work at. But as you can see, you can't rush a craftsman. Slow and steady, get it right, that's the way. And Mark's building a pier out of engineering bricks. That's gonna support the steel beams that are coming across to hold the house up, basically, when we knock all those walls out. Now this is Ecotherm 90mm cavity bats. And here's Mark putting in a few wall ties. Best way not to forget. This is Jogo cutting the thermalite block with an Irwin block saw and the reason he's got to cut those blocks is because you need to bring the blocks to half bond and the only way you can do that really is to have that slip in if you like just to just shift the block along from the corner. Now this is a slip tie and it's used on expansion joints. The idea of an expansion joint is that the brickwork or the blockwork can move very, very slightly as it changes temperature. And this slip tie allows the walls to be tied together. You lay it across that expansion joint and it means that one side is free. The other side's got these holes in it, so that's caught in the mortar. So you imagine the mortar's grabbing that side, but this side is free to slide in and out. Obviously, hopefully it's never gonna slide that far in and out, but you can see that that just allows it to slip. So Mark's using those around the corner on the expansion joint. The reason we need that expansion joint is because we've got a long run of block work around there. It exceeds the six meters. If you go more than six meters, you should put in an expansion joint. And I see a lot of buildings where they don't do that and in the end you get cracking. The idea of an expansion joint is that it tells it where to move, it tells it where to crack so you don't get that problem. But if you don't have an expansion joint it just makes up its own mind where to crack and you bet your life it's going to crack in the easiest places. One of the classic places where you get cracks in a building is underneath the window sills and they just run all the way down. And the reason for that is you've got weight on here and you've got weight on the other side with the lintel, but this bit in the middle is virtually weight free. There's nothing on, on there in the way of a load. So if the building wants to move, obviously it's gonna move where there's the least line of resistance, which is in the middle of that. So have a look around. Let's just go and show you something on here, by the way. If you can see this, all these houses have suffered from the same problem. So if you look at that brickwork above that window, you can see the cracking all the way down. Yeah? Now that is caused by that lintel. There's a concrete lintel in there and it's beginning to give way. There's reinforcing in there and it's beginning to rust. We had exactly the same problem on here and we put some key stone super heavy duty lintels in there. We took out the concrete ones and we put these steel lintels in to take the floor load. So that solved that problem. We're gonna render all this lot anyway because it looks a bit ugly, quite honestly. It's not the nicest brickwork in the world. So we're gonna give that a quick render. But there you are, I digress. Just something I thought you might like to see. And this is a clever trick. Most people would do this with an angle grinder these days, but you know, when you're doing a small slither like that, but Mark is pretty adept at cutting these blocks with 
a hammer and bolster. These are hemolite blocks, by the way. They're made out of recycled material, concrete blocks, but fairly lightweight and pretty good insulation in them. I just love seeing this guy work. And this is the damp proof course going in on the outer skin. You can see that that cavity is fairly tight. We seem to have lost that 10 mil, but we'll get it back in a minute. And here's a rare glimpse of me doing some work. When I'm not filming other people, I do like to get stuck in myself, you know. So let's just have a little talk about insulation. These days we try to insulate buildings to a much higher standard than we used to and in order to do that most of the time the cavity wall is filled with something either a rock wall, some kind of mineral wall insulation or in this case we're using a PIR board. Now this is from Ecotherm and it's a tongued and grooved board. It's what they call a full fill board. So if you look here in the cavity we've got a 100 mil cavity and we've got a 90 millimeter insulation board that goes in. So that leaves 10 millimeters nominally down the front. Now the idea of this is that a lot of the time when people put this insulation in they have a partial fill on the cavity so they have a 100 mil cavity and they put 50 millimeters of insulation in now you might think that's a bit of a waste but the idea is that the cavity is there to stop any transfer of damp from the outside to the inside so if you have a partial fill if any windblown rain gets through this cavity sorry gets through this block work or brickwork into the cavity it runs down the inside of the outside skin so that means it just drains away at the bottom and it's gone now so if you do this if you put a full fill insulation in what you can then end up with is a situation where the water can track across between the boards and to stop that they use this tongue and groove system so the tongues always go upwards and the reason the tongues go upwards is because the groove is going to sit on top of it and if any rain tries to get through there it's got to go in, up, over, down and across and obviously it's not going to do that, it's not that keen so if you did it the other way round you would have a situation where you had the groove upwards and the water would be tracking in and sitting in the groove and would eventually show up on the inside. So with this system, you can full fill the cavity, but it has to be this tongue and groove system, this one from Ecotherm, and it means that that water will just trickle down there and away, safely away, and you won't get any transfer from the outside to the inside with the damp. Very, very important. But as I say, there's lots and lots of ways of doing this. Now this is a bit demanding and Mark Labricky was cursing it a little bit because it means that you've got to maintain that 10 mil gap all the way along there to get it in and you're pushing and you're pulling. But once you get used to it, the reward is that you get a much higher level of insulation. Now we've exceeded the requirements, considerably exceeded them on this. And so that extra insulation has led to a, a better U value for the building, which means that we can increase the glazed area. So they want bifold doors here, they want big picture windows looking out. And in order to do that, under the SAPS system, we have to get that, we have to find those energy savings from somewhere else. So that's how we've done it. We've increased the insulation in the walls, we're going to increase the insulation in the floors and also in the roof. So this house will end up costing less to heat with the extension than it did before when it didn't have the extension. So it's a win-win. By the time we put that underfloor heating in there, that runs at a very low temperature, the whole place will be toasty warm. So, I'm Roger Bisby, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to come back and see us again at Skill Builder. We've got lots more coming up in the near future. And if you're not a subscriber, become a subscriber. It's free and we keep you up to date with everything that's going on on Skill Builder.